Today, the source made a visit to the Fergie Jenkins Foundation Museum. We learned more about the man, his playing career, and as well as some local black history. What inspired the opening of the museum? Uh, if you're taking a walk through time, uh, going back 25 or 30 years ago, um, we were volunteering quite a bit for the Canadian Red Cross, doing a bunch of charity golf tournaments, and we're lucky enough to have Fergie attend one of our venues in 1997. Uh, I think where we supported 10 or 15 charities. It was very, very successful. And on the way back to the airport, when I took Fergie to the airport, and I said, uh, we'd like to continue to use your name. And he said, oh, no, you don't really want to do that. He said, they're doing that many times in the States. And I said, no, we'd really like to do that. Um, so he said, OK, sure. And it was like basically from a handshake. Uh, we started, we uh, operated out of my garage, out of my basement. My wife met with Fergie and said, uh, you need to get your things out of here. You need to get your memorabilia out of here. If this is going to grow, um, maybe you can do something with the Red Cross and share facilities. And that's how it started. So walking very quickly from way back the 90s to where we are today, uh, we're lucky to have Fergie as a chairman. We're lucky to have uh, 10 or 12 great board members uh, that were volunteering, having the resources from the two colleges. You weren't paying for labor. Um, and it just made sense to have um, Canada's only baseball player in the National Baseball Hall of Fame to do a tribute to him, to uh, all of this memorabilia. A lot of it came through his contacts, and we just started to grow. And as we grew, um, you could see we needed uh, a, a place. We needed to, uh, all the shelves that, that you have up here. We're lucky to go through Trillium. They funded us, uh, I think, for about one hundred and fifty to $200,000, and then all the uh, all of our things and ducks, f you know, they came together and they were all in a row and, and it was like there was no turning back. The only obstacle we had, and it wasn't really an obstacle, was to apply for charity status. I think it's almost unheard of to apply for charity status in November and get it in February the following year. My Rotary Club is still applying for charity status and, and you can't get it. So uh, we've been blessed. How has the community welcomed the museum to the area? Um, have they uh, shown a lot of interest in it? Niagara is great, uh, and it's a great place, a great place to, you know, to bring up a family. And, and part of what we do is you're getting more and more families coming here, embracing what we do, taking a tour. And uh, it's not only baseball. It's black history. It's education. It's internships. It's a little bit of everything. And so um, I think the community has accepted us, and, and uh, we need them as well. Amidst the pandemic, ever since uh, the pandemic started, what are some challenges that uh, you might have faced? Well, uh, we were in, uh, I'm going to take you back to where we were when we got the announcement. We were doing spring training in uh, Phoenix, uh, which means that we're doing baseball games every day, sometimes two. So we're doing 30 to 45 games. We were at uh, the Cubs Park. We got this announcement that uh, we needed to shut down with no real explanation, and we needed to pack up and head back to the border. I think the Prime Minister at the time was uh, asking all Canadians to come back home. Um, we did really didn't know what was going on, so we didn't pack everything we thought we should have packed. In hindsight, uh, brought a lot more back. But we have five storage facilities in Phoenix that we pay for, we can't access to. And as you know, the border's closed. So uh, that is really hurting us uh, financially. If it wasn't for a lot of the funding programs that you're having, whether it's Trillium, or the museum grants that are there. Uh, there's many, and, and, the, and the city of St. Catharines to the mayor has been helpful as well uh, with his chief of staff uh, directing some of the opportunities to me. But um, who would have thought we would be in limbo for two years uh, and, and sometimes in lockdown with nobody really allowed here? And then when we were allowed to open up, you're allowed to open up with 50% occupancy. And, and then we were told you can only have four or five in a tour. This is a real challenge for us to accept what new normal is. Uh, and again, the longer it goes that we can't get across the border, we're just going to have to be a little bit more creative and find out how we're going to generate some funds to, uh, to, to survive. Yeah. You know, uh, it's one thing to be down for a pandemic for 18 months. I mean, and it's not a bottomless pit. And you can see there's a lot of memorabilia on the floor, and there's a lot more of it. Maybe there comes a time where we need to address our surplus inventory uh, and make it available to the public, and at the same time take those funds, uh, be able to operate and, and uh, support some of the charities 
back in there because I'm sure all the charities are hurting. We're hurting, they're hurting because we support many of them uh, throughout the year. Um, I know you you talked about and you showed me the um, the, the black history I display you have upstairs. Can you just talk about that a little bit? That's our crown jewel. Um, I'm very happy with the, with the Black History Museum. Uh, Wilma Morrison was a strong uh, advocate of black history in Niagara. Uh, she got us involved with the church in Niagara Falls and also the one on Geneva Street. Um, and she passed away last year. She left uh, a number of pieces that you saw upstairs. Uh, I believe we have the largest doll display, uh, if not in Ontario, probably in Canada. There's 30 to 40 uh, uh, black dolls up there, a lot of them handmade. Um, she also donated 100 books on black history uh, that we showcase upstairs uh, with one of her outfits and, and the chair that she read in. Um, and then, again, from black athletes, uh, from Fergie's uh, descendants, we did his family tree as well, as I showed you, that uh, his daughters are directly descended to Josiah Henson. Um, and uh, it's something that I think we as Canadians need to show our identity, and that's part of it. And, and so, uh, you know, whether you're black, white, any color, it's, this, is, this is home for them, and, and it's educational, it's something that shouldn't be lost, and it's something that we've worked very hard in attaining and showcasing, and, and I said to you when I started, it's our crown jewel, and we're very proud of it. We are busier with tours, it's kind of nice, obviously due to the pan pandemic. Um, I think Niagara takes this for granted, so they know they can come anytime, we would never turn them away, but we're getting a lot of Toronto people that are coming down to go to the wineries, to go to Niagara Falls, and this is a nice stop. They can come in for an hour, an hour and a half. Um, we have a little gift shop behind you that, that I was able to show you. Uh, they all want to go home with a Fergie ball, or a Larry Walker ball, or a Fergie book, or his book, you know, something as, as a bit of a, a souvenir. And we want the children to go home with something as well, so we try to give them something uh, on their way out. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday seems to work. But I'm here uh, basically at Back and Call. If they want to be here Saturday and Sunday, we're going to do that. We're back here on Saturday as well because we know that there's a, a tour coming in. I don't think we should be not accommodating, especially through this pandemic. After making your way through the museum and the Black History Wing, come on down to the gift shop so you can make a donation for any of these incredible items behind me. For more information on the museum, you can visit the website. Reporting for The Source, I'm Jesse Nobrega.